Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Richard Strauss's Zalome, which premiered at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Ale Atonorieu. The production was done by Klaus Gut. The set design and costumes were done by Muriel Gerstner. The lights were handled by Olaf Freze. The choreographer was Zoma Ulrichson. And the dramaturgy was handled by Ivona Gabawa and Kurt Rösler. Now, I'm not going to expand any further of why I love this particular opera and that this was also based on the play by Oscar Wilde on the same name with the German text done by Hedwig Lachmann. But I'll talk about the production, the singers, and the conducting and state my opinions on each of them. Now, this is basically a Klaus Gut production, which means that you basically have a very empty background and it's very minimalist with simple costumes and it kind of has that foreboding feel. Now, for those of you who don't know who Klaus Gut is, he is basically a German theater and opera director who specializes in a lot of minimalist and very interesting works that focus a lot more on the character psychology more than the set design or the overall overall grandeur of certain sceneries. Basically, there are times that his sceneries are basically bare-boned, and then he does a lot of interesting things with the characters of the opera. So he's basically a regie director. Now that that's said, let's get on to what I thought about this overall production. Now, I thought that this production was rather typical of any Klaus Gut production. It's very minimalist. It has a very weird concept. And it can be kind of all over the place from time to time. There were certain things I liked about this production particular production, like having a lot of the younger Zalomes go on stage and pretty much move the plot along. I thought it was rather interesting and even have the Dance of the Seven Veils, even though it wasn't really erotic or really sensual, have a certain delving in into Zalome's childhood of how Herodes and Herodias met, how they ended up being hitched, how they ended up having, well, Zalome together, even though she was originally Herodias's daughter and Herodias was just merely the stepfather. I thought it was rather, rather interesting, yet rather weird, especially when you have Herodias and Herodias robotically dancing with each other. I thought it was rather weird in a, in a pretty funny way. And then you even have Zalome, who doesn't really do a lot of dancing in this particular dance of the Seven Veils, even though she's pretty much almost required to. But she does dance a little bit, but doesn't really take everything off. So I basically felt that while the dance of the Seven Veils in this particular production was rather interesting in its own way, I felt that it lacked the eroticism the heat and the overall sensuality that really makes a great dance of the seven veils worth worth watching and with this i basically felt yeah especially with the jew scene i didn't really feel like this particular scene had a lot of fire or bombasticity to really add to any great Jew scene because usually when it comes to the scene of the Jews, I usually expect it to be very bombastic, quite over the top, and usually quite physical because it's no surprise that as someone who has been trained as an actor for a good four years and someone who has an immense interest in theater and film, I would have loved to have a lot more physicality going on with the Jew scene, like have some of the Jews punch each other or have them do some type of fighting choreography with each other instead of just singing. But here I felt like it kind of made me feel pretty bored. And that's how I, 
That's how I felt about almost with this entire production. There were moments in which I felt pretty bored when this entire opera is supposed to be exciting and supposed to get your blood pumping and blood boiling from time to time. As of here, there were moments in which it can be exciting, it can be thrilling, but it wasn't really there. It just kind of felt lukewarm, say for the first act, in which you have a lot of the men in suits and fine shoes, yet they move in a very robotic way, whether it be not a bolt or the page or the soldiers or anybody. They move in a, like a very robotic way, except Yohanaan, in which when he has his scene, he comes out of a pile of dirty laundry, half naked with only his undies. And I thought it was kind of kind of interesting. Maybe it was just also to show that he's kind of separated himself from civilization and separated himself from society because he just couldn't stand their pretentiousness. I don't know. And at times it also felt like this was also Zalome's dream of how she sees men because, you know, Zalome is only 16 years old. So what this production implies in the first scene is that this is basically Zalome's dream. She basically sees a lot of the men in her life, whether it be Narabot, the page, the two soldiers, and many of the party guests as nothing more than just mechanical dolls. In fact, Narabot in his death scene, when he just couldn't take it anymore, he dies like a malfunctioning robot instead of stabbing himself to death. So I thought it was rather surreal in its own weird little way. And I think what also made this production kind of rather interesting was even having a lot of the young Salome's clothe Yohanaan as if to say that he should be back in civilization because, you know, Salome is totally head over heels with him. And there was also a, a, a very nice scene between Salome and Yohanaan. And there were moments in which Yohanaan wasn't in the cistern, but he was like out there in person and even haunting Herodas as well, which I felt like was rather interesting and pretty much also built a lot of character dynamics between Herodas and Yohanaan. So overall, the production was iffy at best. There were some pretty good and interesting elements, but there are moments in which it kind of made me feel bored and made me kind of wonder what the heck is going on. What's also worth mentioning is that during the applause, when Klaus Gut and the crew came on stage, there were some audience members that booed him and some of the crew members. I thought it was kind of uncouth, but they expressed their opinions of how they felt about Klaus Gut. So I didn't really boo him as as the others did. But let's just say that I wasn't really that that turned on by his production. There were some good elements, but there were some elements which made me think, um, what the heck was I watching? There were times I felt like I was watching another opera because, well, this is Zalome. Zalome is supposed to have a lot of really hot and steamy moments, not a lot of lukewarm moments where there were just things that kind of made me scratch my head. So basically, that's how I felt about the production. Very lukewarm. But the singing was rather well done. So let's start off with our title heroine, Zalome, sung tonight by Catherine Naglestad. Now, Zalome really does require a very, very versatile spinto or dramatic soprano voice. She has to have the lyricism of a Chocho San, Desdemona, Maria Bocanegra, or Amalia Grimaldi from Simone Bocanegra, and the more meatier parts of Aida, or um, what was that? Giselda from Lombardi, and Danae from. Deliba von Danae, and Gutrune from Götterdämmerung, Elsa von Lohengrin, 
and Elisabeth from Tannhäuser. Now with Catherine Naglestad, as I said before, when she replaced Evelyn Helitius during a concert, she specialized in a huge repertoire from the dramatic coloratura soprano roles of Norma to the more lyrical parts of Mimi to the more spintoey parts like Aida, Desdemona, and many, many other parts, and even some of the Wagnerian roles like Elsa from Lohengrin and many others, and Zeglinda from Die Valkyrie. So it's no surprise that she has sung Zalome for a huge number of times as well. I really love her voice in general. I love everything that comes out of the middle range. I love her high notes. However, if there's one part of the staff that I'm not crazy of when it comes to her singing voice, it's when she sings the much lower notes. I felt like there were times she was rather grainy, and I felt like at times her chest notes seemed, well almost meh. But when it comes to the high notes and the middle notes, no problem. They reveal a very full, full-sounded, very full-toned and rich soprano voice, which can basically soar when it has to soar. And when it comes to her acting, I have to say she does a pretty good job in the acting department and there were some times I kind of noticed that she could have been directed a lot better, but she managed to use her acting chops very well, which should be a must for any great Salome. So overall, I have to say that I'm rather impressed with her performance in this role, even though her low notes kind of lost a little bit of that shimmer. I don't know. But she still does a very fine job with this role in terms of her acting and in terms of her singing and even with the final act. And seeing the role of her stepfather, Herodes, is the German character tenor Burkhard Ulrich. Now the thing about Herodes is that historically he was originally sung by a dramatic tenor. And throughout history he's been attracting a lot of dramatic tenors, held in tenors, and also that of the character tenors, or even spinto tenors. A lot of tenors who have sung the likes of Hernani, or Carlo Mor from Masnadieri, Cavaradossi from Tosca, and Matteo from Arabella, Loge from Das Heingold, Lohengrin from Lohengrin, Walter von Stolzing from Die Meistersinger von Nürnberg, Erik from Der Fliegende Holländer, and many, many other parts for a spinto or dramatic tenor. Heck, even any tenor who sung the likes of Belmonte, Idomeneo, Edgardo, or Alfredo from La Traviata, and even Polione from Norma have even flocked to sing Herod in the later parts of their career. And even a lot of character tenors flocked to sing this role. With Burkhard Ulrich, I have to say that he does a very solid job with this part in terms of his acting. He was able to bring out all the neurosis, all of the crazy moments, which makes Herod just bombastic. Yes, I do expect a more spinto tenor voice or a more dramatic or held in tenua voice to really sing over an orchestra and to really sing his part. But I thought he did a fine job. The only issue that I had with Burkhard Ulrich is that there are times that he screams his lines. But it's a small price to pay for a very fine performance with this really neurotic character. So he does a very fine job with this character. As thankless as it is. Singing the equally thankless role of Herodias is the veteran dramatic soprano... Jean Michel Chabonnet. Herodias has attracted a lot of dramatic mezzos who have sung the likes of Eboli, Amneris, Lady Macbeth, Federica from Luisa Miller, Azucena from Trovatore, Preziosilla from La Forza del Destino, Brangena from Tristan, Magdalena from Meistersinger, 
Frecke from The Ring Saga, Kundri from Parsifal, Ortrud from Lohengrin, and Dalila from Samson et Dalila, Fides from Le Prophète, and many, many other roles sung by a dramatic mezzo. With Jean-Michel Chabonnet in this role, she does a very fine job making Herodias not so much the screaming harpy, but someone who is rather, well, desensitized to everything that is happening in Herodias's pad. She's basically become very desensitized, trying to calm herself down with a few sips of wine, playing cards, and even just to smoking as well, and even to finding a certain place in the stage to try to sit down all of her problems and all of the shit that she's going through and then just pretend that anything just will end up disappearing. Now, Jean-Michel Chabonnet has started out, like a lot of dramatic sopranos, singing a lot of the spinto soprano repertoire, usually in the Italian repertoire. But years went by as she built herself up more in the Wagnerian soprano repertoire. She started off singing the likes of Amelia from Un Balo en Mascara and Aida and Tosca and even Turandot. But later on, she sang the likes of Isolde, Brunhilde, Elektra, Ortrud, Venus, Kundri, and even the Wozzeck Marie and many, many other roles for a dramatic or a Wagnerian soprano. Nowadays, she's also singing the Kostelnitschka from Yanufa. And from what I've read in her biography, unless this is also confirmed to be true, she will also be singing in the near future the likes of Amneris, Clytemnestra from Electra, and even more Herodias's. So with her as, Gen um, as Herodias, I thought that Miss Chabonnet did a very fine job. Sure, there were times I noticed a vibrato in her voice, but that was also because she also sang a lot of the big roles for many years, so it kind of took a toll on her voice. But still, she was able to give a very fine portrayal without going too over the top, without resorting to being very hammy, but I thought she was able to give a very subtle and very desensitized portrait of Herodias. Usually a lot of singers who sing Herodias make her a very, a very witchy and bitchy character, cackling her way through Herodias, making him feel like such a failure, and then just really, really wailing at him. But with her in this particular in this particular Herodias, I thought she was able to be subtle without going too over the top. So she did a very fine job with this role. Singing the role of Johanna Ann was the German dramatic baritone Michael Volle. The thing about Johanna Ann is that he's attracted a lot of dramatic baritones, singing the roles of Nabucco, Germain from La Traviata, Francesco Foscari, Macbeth, Vecchio Miller from Luisa Miller, Monforte from I Vespri Siciliani, Scarpia from Tosca, um, Rambaldo from La Rondine, Michele from Il Tabarro, um, Urias from Mireille, Escamillo from Carmen, Tomsky from The Queen of Spades, and even Le Comte de Nevers from Les Huguenots, Tel Ramund, Corvenal, Kotzner, um, Klingsor, and Donna and Alberich. Those dramatic baritones who specialize in those roles have also flocked to sing this really thankless character. And I thought that with Michael Foller in this particular Johanna Ann, I thought he was just able to really give the goods because he's been singing this role for quite some time and he has a very, very fine dramatic presence and he has a very, very fine acting skill as well, making Johanna Ann not only a wounded dog, but a very, very dignified person. So it was definitely enjoyable just watching him see what he can do with this particular character. Singing the role of Narobot was 
Thomas Blondel, who I saw two years ago as Macduff from Macbeth, and who I also saw him like eight months ago as the Prince from The Love of the Three Oranges. Narobot, unlike Herodes, needs a more lyrical tenor. And even a more spinto tenor as well. Any tenor who has sung the likes of Tamino, the Duke, Edgardo, Tonio from Le Fille de Regiment, Almaviva from Il Barbiere de Siviglia, Henri, and um, Pedrillo, and Arbace, and let's see right here. Ah, even the likes of Rodolfo from La Boheme, and Rinuccio from Gianni Schicchi have flocked to sing this particular thankless tenor role. And I thought with Thomas Blondella singing this role, he was able to give such a fine and very wonderfully voiced interpretation of this really thankless character, helped with a very fine technique and really, really wonderful high notes and a homogenous timbre. And then we have The Page, sung by German mezzo-soprano Annika Schlicht. She does a very fine job with this role, and she was able to sing her heart out really, really effectively. And then we have the role of the Jew, or the roles of the Jews, sung by the following singers. We have Gideon Poppe, Jörg Schörner, Paul Kaufmann, Clemens Biba, and Stephen Bronk. All of them sang very well, but as I said before when I was talking about the production, they could have been benefiting a lot more if they were a lot more physical with each other. Other than that, I thought they sang their roles very well. And then we have the two soldiers sung by Alexei Botnashuch and um, Tobias Keira. Very fine basso voices, resonant, rich, and just so velvety and luscious as well. And then we have the two Nazarenes sung by Noel Boley and Thomas Lehman. Very fine voices and just an overall really great timbre as to be expected by these two gentlemen. And then we have a singer that I never heard of before until now, Franz Zava Schrecht, who sung the role of the, the Cappadocian. I thought he was a very fine singer, and I thought his timbre was very great all around. And even the dancers of the young Zalomés and the other dancers really did a very fine job with their particular roles. So overall, I was quite impressed with the singing. And what was also worth mentioning was that before the opera started, there was also an announcement stating that Catherine Naglistad, who was the Zalomé of the evening, was kind of under the weather. But despite that, she was able to march forward and just really, really give it her all. Despite some shortcomings here and there, but they're all forgivable. So basically, despite some of the shortcomings, I have to say the quality of the singing was rather impressive. And the conducting done by Monsieur Artonolieu was really great. There were some moments in which the conducting seemed to drag a little bit, especially in the final scene. But in terms of how it was built, I thought it was just so magnetic. So it was still a very solid conducting all around done by Maestro Altonolio. So overall, even though I did not care too much about the production, I have to say that the singing and the conducting really more than make up for it. So I was having a really wonderful time with this particular opera. And if you are a fan of Klaus Gut, or if you are kind of interested in his productions, then you probably might like it. For those of you who aren't really too particular about this particular production of Zalome, or for those of you who don't really care too much about Klaus Gut's productions, then it's probably worth the skip. So that's it for this review of Richard Strauss's Zalome. Stay tuned next weekend where I review the live stream Metropolitan Opera production of Puccini's Turandot, starring Nina Stemmer and Marco Berti. So until then, good night, everybody.